welcome back to our Texas homestead. Today we're going to be making sauerkraut. Okay. So, um, first, first you just start out with the head of cabbage. You cut out the uh, center you, core. You cut out the middleman to get the hard core out of it. Um, we found this mandolin at an estate sale, and I uh, completely went back through it and refurbished it and made it to where it actually works again. If you don't have one of these, you can just... You can always just use a knife and chop it. But. Or a food processor, whatever you need to do to get it chopped up nice and thin. If you ever find one of these, get it cleaned up. Be sure you uh, lube your track with like vegetable oil. So that way it uh, goes nice and smooth. But to me, this is a whole lot easier and faster than using a food processor or uh, definitely chopping it by hand. like making cold slaw or as in sauerkraut too this makes for a pretty easy little deal it's nice having a second person do it oh sorry get y'all in the camera there sorry it's nice having a second person do it hold it for you considering this one doesn't come with like a little pedestal for it i'd love to have some legs on this thing but uh Just so they give a little more stability. It's not gonna take that but. There you go. All ready to go. Nice and easy cut. You'll get little stuff like that that goes through it, but everything's super nice, super fine. That's made just for, that's perfect for crowd or um, cold salt. Okay, so once you get it all chopped up, for every head of cabbage you're going to do, you're going to use about a tablespoon of salt. And so you're going to sprinkle it on there and then you're just going to let it set for a minute so it can um, start sweating, making the liquid for it. All right. This is the mandolin we found. It's a TD Kraut Cutter, made in Indianapolis. Uh, can't, I mean, it's one of those you'd have to, I've seen them on eBay and a few other places if you're interested in finding one or find one at a state sale and you just get one in kind of rough shape, redo it, and it's, you got a really nice kraut cutter. So we're back to, um, got, a, got it ready to go and go to the next step. Okay, so after you've let the salt sit there for a minute or two, then you should just start getting in with your hands and mixing the salt up in with the cabbage. And you're waiting for it to really start sweating and get like some liquid built up in there. minutes or so then you're just going to start packing it in your jars and you can use any size jar you want the wide mouth is of course easier to get filled up so but you just put some in there and then you get uh i got a pickle packer but anything that's kind of got the flat edge on it and you're just going to pack it down in there really tight and if you like sauerkraut then this is much cheaper than trying to go and buy it at the store already made. Because like right now, cabbage is 69 cents a pound. And this was maybe two or three pounds. And then just that 
tablespoon of salt. That's all it costs to make. I think I'm gonna get like three quarts out of this. And then once it gets done fermenting on your countertop, which will take like two weeks or so, then it can stay in your refrigerator for like um, a year. And I don't know if you can see it, but I can hear it when I press it down. It's really um, bubbling up and getting the juices. So once you get about an inch headspace, like right underneath this bottom ring, then you're gonna put a weight on it. I have these glass weights from um, Mason Tops, but you can also just take the outer leaves of your cabbage and roll it up. And use that as a weight to keep it down. Or you can get a Ziploc baggie and fill it up with water and put that in there. But what you're wanting is to keep the cabbage underneath the juice. I'm not sure if you can see it, but oh, wow. the juice really comes up above the uh, yeah. weight. It's quite a bit. So then you can either just put um, a ring on it or a lid and a ring, but just don't tighten the lid down all the way because um, it creates gases. And if you do it this way, you're gonna have to burp it every day, which is just loosening the lid. But um, if you make it really tight, and all those gases build up, the liquid will start um, coming out and it'll go all over your counter. So, but I have these little tops and it's got a little nipple in it, like a baby bottle. And so it just naturally lets the gases out. And then you just put your ring on it. But if it's your first time making it and you don't wanna go through the expense of all that extra stuff, you can always do the other ways to do it. It's something we make quite a bit of, so we felt the investment on the weights and the, uh, the old burpers were well worth it. Um, I'll add those into the description for you with our Amazon link in case you're wanting to get some. That way you'll have a way to get it. Any purchase y'all make in our Amazon cart, even if you don't buy something that's in our cart, actually gives money back to the channel to help improve the channel. Uh, you can go in there and just go through our link, go spend 500 bucks on something else, and we actually get credit for it. We actually get a couple bucks back. So Every little bit helps when it comes to doing everything especially for video equipment and microphones, everything else. So, but there's other things you can ferment besides sauerkraut. Like I'll ferment carrots and uh, cherry tomatoes. And it has like um, the, it creates good bacteria that help with your gut and stuff. And it's just supposed to make you healthier. Supposedly a bad gut is what causes a lot of autoimmune issues and stuff. So. I'm gonna take this year and find out if it actually works. But I only actually got one and a half quarts out of it. Not as much as I was hoping for. What? So that's this regular? Yeah. But we're gonna let it sit on the counter for like two weeks. Um, it all depends on how warm your house is as to how fast it ferments. The warmer your house is, the faster it will ferment. And uh, you might want to try it after a week or so and see how it tastes. If it's your first time making it, you might not want it as sour as we eat it. So, but then after it's sat there, then um, this is what you end up with. It got a lot smaller. This was like a full jar. And um, then you just put it in your refrigerator and it's good for like a year and you have sauerkraut whenever you're ready to have hot dogs or sausage or whatever, or it's just good on the side. So thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys and gals.